Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm covering this scav run for intelligence and uh, recently I got together 100 intel scav runs to get all that information, put it in a spreadsheet so you guys can get all the uh, best information I can on why it's so valuable and how it's going to be absolutely amazing next wipe. I'm going to be covering a fair few topics within this, so without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So first up, I'll have a link below down to the spreadsheet so you guys can actually investigate all the information that we've uh, compiled down there. Uh, this spreadsheet was put together by my community and uh, I've got a bunch of people that are willing to help out and they're absolutely amazing for us. A quick shout out to the physicians there. The way we did it was we got 100 Intel scav runs and then we put it all into a spreadsheet to break down the full information and then um, using the current flea market value and this was at the end of April, about 23rd of April, we worked out how much a scav run would be worth at that point in time. Now it's going to change a lot um, from that. So there's the information on the uh, percentage and chances for 100 Intel scav runs, and it's all available for you guys to, to go through this as much as you like, but I'm gonna break it down for you right now. Now why is actually doing scav runs with the, the intelligence important? And, and this is the hideout. So first up to get it, uh, you need to get the intelligence center level two in the hideout, and then you can get the scav case Intel run uh, unlocks from there. Now to get that, even if you played flat stick like I do at the start of a wipe, it's probably going to take you about 72 hours because of just the time it takes to upgrade something in the hideout. Plus you're going to have to get all the items to do that. But uh, intelligence level two is where you unlock the scav case. And then it's pretty straightforward from there. You just have to have an intelligence on you and you can do start doing your runs from there. Each run goes for 5 hours and 20 minutes. And then when the items come back, you get uh, all the items found in raid. The most important or the, the biggest reason that's going to be so so great is that found in raid feature. Um, you're not going to have to do any risk to get some items uh, that you can sell on the flea market. Now, when you're actually doing this, there's going to be a large amount of items that are going to be quite considerably expensive uh, early on in the wipe. By early on, I mean in the first three months of a wipe, particularly keys. Um, I'll start off with flash drives. There's an 11% chance you're gonna get a flash drive. It's somewhere probably between 10 and 12% chance. So that is also going to be a massive selling point for the people who are trying to get their flash drives quest done on Skia early on. Um, the other ones need to be found in raid. If you are stuck on getting your found in raid flash drives, there is this option for you to actually get some flash drives for yourself um, if the Jaeger task hasn't been changed. To summarize what the changes are gonna be for tasks at the moment, all we know is the Jaeger tasks are gonna be changed up and every other task is gonna stay completely the same. There's gonna be a dozen new tasks added to the game and uh, with the other tasks in the game that are currently there, the actual requirements won't change, but the rewards will. So we don't know what those rewards are yet. When it comes to uh, the next items that are really important, are gonna be those barter trade items, all the tech items, there's electronic motors, uh, phase control relays, CPU fans, T-shaped plugs, circuit boards, power cords, spark plugs, and heaps more. You can go through that list on the spreadsheet if you like, but these items will sell for so much money on the flea market. Everyone's gonna be trying to level up their hideouts and, and get it all done so they can get that Bitcoin farm and get the you know that passive income consist consistently happening. And um, for you to be able to get those items and just pay whatever it is for an intelligence document, to get those items and sell them on the flea market, it's gonna be worth gold. The earlier you can get this scav case um, Intel run happening, the, the actual more profit you're gonna get because there's gonna be an influx of Intels being up on the flea market. And as people start trying to farm this method, they're going to become more and more expensive. So hold on to any Intel docs you get because you can flip this out for uh, quite considerable good money early on. Next up, we've got keys. Now I went through the entire spreadsheet I listed in my, I counted up how many keys that had high value uh, early on in the wipe. Now you're not gonna be able to just go into a raid with a key, use it for a task and then sell it. Once you take that key into a raid, the found in raid de like, is gonna get taken off the key. And so you're not gonna be able to resell it. If you do, you'll have to either do it through like a Discord or some other means, but to sell it on the flea market, you won't be able to. So being able to do a scav run uh, for, for the uh, keys is gonna be amazing. Now 41 of the 100 keys I honestly think will sell for probably anywhere between two and five times the amount of an Intel doc. I'm guessing Intel docs are going to start pretty cheap, maybe between the one and 200,000 ruble mark, and they'll probably end up going to a three or 400,000 mark. But even at 300,000, some of these keys will sell comfortably at one and a half to to 3 million early on in a wipe. So those keys that you're getting are going to honestly pay for the entire run. 
and then you're gonna have all the extra items that are gonna make you money. I can't see this not being mass profit early what. Just even just one item being of value in a run, which I kinda, there's, there's a chance between five and eight items coming back from an Intel run. But even if it's just one, there's a good chance that one item will still sell for 150K. So you're gonna be nearly making pure profit from this unless intelligence skyrockets. I will have a link down below to the Intel run for reserve. And I'm also gonna be making a Intel uh, location guide for labs because they're also very common on labs as well. So if you go to either reserve or labs, you should be checking these spots because that's going to make you the bank there. Now, we'll be putting out a guide talking about uh, stuff that you should really th think about before the actual wipe happens if you actually wanna profit the most early on in the wipe. And, and now there's gonna be two guides coming out gonna be really in detail um, but something I would, would probably emphasize here is you need to be a little bit I guess task savvy when it comes to the wipe um, there's going to be like certain items are going to be a lot higher value compared to uh, early on in the wipe compared to later on in the wipe so lead X's for example will sell for a lot more later in the wipe when people start having complete stashes and having the ability to get thick item cases but when you are getting items like uh, graphics cards early on no one's gonna even want like want them. The task is quite, it's about halfway through the task line, you're gonna actually be handing in graphics cards and the Bitcoin farms ages away for most people. So graphics cards aren't even gonna sell for much early on either. So I would actually advise guys be kind of savvy about which items you sell on the flea market early on. If you know you're gonna need it yourself, hold on to it. If you've got excess of it, but you know the prices are way too low, it just think of it as like an investment. Like you wait two weeks or a month and you probably make three to five times more money on those items. So just be patient with some of these items. But those barter trades, a lot of those ones on the hideout, you're going to know which ones they are if you've got to this point of the actual scav run uh, for the Intel docs. Um, and you'll know which ones are going to be worth heats by this point. So just be a, bit, a little bit savvy about that information and uh, which which ones you're going to, or which items you're going to use to sell and hold on to. That is pretty much it. So to summarize this, guys, there's a spreadsheet. You can go check out the spreadsheet to get all the data you want. Um, it's going to be really important to get that scav case early on if you want to make profit from it. Um, later on in the wipe, it will become less and less profitable, but you will actually make complete bank of it. Um, keep an idea about notable items early on in the wipe and throughout the whole wipe. And, and even if you're watching this video and it's already late in the wipe, it's, it's probably a good idea to actually understand that you can use these scav runs for... Uh, you know, profit in different ways or even try finding items for yourself. So guys, smash the shit out of the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for future content. I am going to be pumping out guides. So smash the, uh, the notification bell as well if you're interested in any of this information. Um, there's going to be so many guides coming out, particularly straight off the wipe. I'm going to be making new guides for all the traders up to date with the newest tasks. And uh, with these new editors I've got on board, the yeah, quality is just getting better and better. And we're, we're constantly trying to improve our craft as well. Uh, to make the guys as best as possible for you. So I do stream on Twitch every day of the week, guys. So if you've got any questions about this stuff, you can always comment down below. Hit me up on my live stream. I do stream every day of the week. And lastly, guys, I'll see you next time. <laughs>